This meeting is being recorded. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we can, I think we can go ahead and call the meeting to order. It's 434. One of Candace's items was uh, the note taking responsibilities, which I think we should talk about right away. So, um, you know, either we can rotate it every week or if someone wants to volunteer to be the default person. <laughs> well, you like my notes? Dan, I did like your notes. Actually, they were very good notes. Um, I don't know if you have time to always do that. or It's hard to do when we're involved. But exactly. If no one yeah. will do it. We'll find a way to get it done. You're just going to have to be patient because <laughs> it'll probably be done the day of the meeting. Were those but circulated? They were circulated today. And I can share the I can share the minutes from the last meeting. Um, yeah, we trashed, we trashed you, Phil, because you weren't there. I think it's good for someone from the, that's on the committee to take the minutes. Um, and I'm willing to do it alternate, but I can't do it every time. Um, so if anyone's interested in co-clerking, uh, I guess. I'll do it today only. How about that? <laughs> okay, we have someone for today. That's wonderful. Okay. And if anyone like in the middle of the night feels like, wow, I really should do that. <laughs> feel free to let us know um I, oh, so, I also didn't get the notes that um dan took oh okay so well, at least we're gonna look at the said, minutes I only, I only sent them to you set two and uh oh you did oh, oh okay, okay. <laughs> well then what we should I, do I didn't, I didn't, I, to be honest with you i i, I didn't want to send them to you julie um <laughs> I have your email, but I didn't have everyone else's and i didn't want everyone else to get oh, yeah, yeah yeah that's you know funny. offended so i figured all right, maybe since we haven't had time to review them today, then we should, I can send them to everyone after the meeting and then we can approve them at the next meeting. Does that sound good to everyone? Yep. Awesome, great. Thank you. So then I think after that, we can just jump right in to our agenda. Um, let me, I can actually share that too. Okay, okay. All right, so Denise has been introduced. So I guess we can talk about the project schedule updates, um, Phil and Dan, if you have things to talk about in that area today. Well, the only, Phil had given you a schedule uh, when I wasn't there. and I kind of thought we could do a little bit better than Phil's schedule, but I'm, I'm not gonna speak for Phil. Uh, I wanna try and get to bidding as quickly as possible. I know that uh, that's easier if we don't change the design too much. If you guys want to go back and start changing the design of the building, then uh, we're probably going to be right on target with Phil's Phil's, Phil's uh, schedule. Um, so, I mean, it's kind of up to you guys. Uh, I, my only fear has always been uh, inflation, uh, inflation, and inflation. So um, that's that's how I'll leave it. do you have any comments about that well from, from my point of view i i'll do everything i can to, to make the thing go along quicker i think we the last time we spoke and, and a couple times prior to that we were talking about potentially revising the the design based on the trees um i've actually taken a look at that and i have some slides tonight uh with a with a sketch of what that might look like if anybody's interested in seeing it um but you know if we if if we get to the point where you have um you decide you want to bring on an arborist and and they say that tree's not worth keeping and we can stick with the original design then really the only changes that we're talking about are, are, are things that might have changed since you know in the last five years and and any input from the board of library commissioners that you want to include uh in the current design so it i I don't think either one of those two scenarios is going to take a long, long time. But the the one where we're completely redesigning the building probably has you know a couple more meanings in it in order to come up with a plan that everybody's satisfied with. And the, the board of library commission is going to want to look at whatever we do, and and but they can typically typically turn around a plan pretty quickly. You typically will hear back in the same week. Okay. Do we have a? Do we have? Uh, I'm sorry, Tim. Tim had a question. Go ahead, Dan. 
Uh, do we have a do we have review comments from the grant that we have to incorporate, Phil? I haven't heard about them yet. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll reach out to uh, to Lauren and see if there's anything. I know yeah. it's an, it's unrestricted, but it's an you know she didn't have any restriction in the grant, but sometimes they have comments. The actual reviewers have comments. Yeah, they will. Um... We typically have, you know, once the grants all get announced and they stack them all up that summer, they'll they'll meet with folks and kind of go over what the grant reader said and so forth. And I don't know if I don't remember I don't, doing that. <laughs> I don't remember doing that for this one. And they might have just we might have just kind of gone through the first group. And I mean, they've got all those notes and everything, but I don't recall doing that for this building. So Tim had a question, and Ava has a question, and Judy. Um, so. I, I support getting an arborist, um, and I think that's a reasonable price. So, um, but Phil, the only thing that I would like to see changed, if we if the trees are not worth saving for the in the arborist opinion, and we go with that, um, I would like to maximize the orientation of the roof so that it has can take the maximum amount of solar pa panels that's possible. So, how much how much would you have to rejigger to orient the roof so that you've got a good south facing um, stretch. Um, I, that's probably easier for me to show you on this on the yeah. slides. Um, but also, I had that in mind when I when I did the, the redesign that I'm going to show you. So I'll wait uh, and let Eva. Do you have a question before we look? Yeah, at the just plans? just for background purposes. So there was a design and then based on public input, on trees in the back, the design is being reconsidered. Is that my, is that a correct understanding? That's one reason. Um, the other reason is because of the solar. Um, so um, yeah, so those are the two reasons that we're considering that, yeah. When, when, when the arborist goes out there, um, you know, we, we gotta be cognizant of the fact that there's gonna be a septic field and there's going to be storm water, and you know I don't know how how much grade change we're going to have, regardless of whether the building itself is there. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that once the arborist checks the actual tree and determines the tree can in fact live, I think we ought to have that discussion with the arborist and how far we can stretch that rubber band so that we don't kill it. Mm. Julie, did you say there's no septic back there? It's on sewer, right? Yeah, it's on sewer. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Nice. but I know that um, the forester I talked with was wondering about drainage because the drainage that is you know that we have now might be different than the drainage we would have in the um, in the future, and that could upset the tree. That that's what I mean by storm water. Oh, okay. I seem to remember that we were putting something back there. Maybe maybe um. Yeah, we don't. It was a long time ago. So, but we don't. Uh, yeah, we don't have to. I mean, we could start, We could do. We could do something in the side yard uh, for well, the roof. Well, and, and now that you own the church, I mean, we're not confined by that boundary. Okay. If you stretch it, and it goes a little bit into the church property, it, 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 away from the tree. We we have that ability to do that. I'm talking subsurface. Sure, and we might be able to to do something subsurface under the parking lot as well. I mean, we got that brook close by and. So I don't know exactly where the water table is, but we'll we need to figure that out. Okay, Judy, you also had a question. Yes, um, this is a, a slightly different um, a, a piece of of this, not not the tree and outside, but when we did the um, first when, when we did the um, application to the MBLC, the first thing we did was uh -oh. needs um, and Candace and Seth will remember that we went to visit I don't know a dozen or so other libraries. And Sarah very carefully did a lot of um, statistical analysis about exactly what uses the library was being put to and where those uses were um, not being met by the space that was available. So the, the plan that we came up with last time um, was based on this, this very, um, very specific needs assessment. And it seems to me that now that it's like five years later, six years later, we need to go back to that needs assessment and see if we still agree with what it says, because technology has changed a lot. 
lot of things have changed since that was put together. And um, uh, see if, if any of the interior space needs to be um, looked at again and po possibly redesigned or reshuffled around. Um, yeah. We can only stretch that so far programmatically because your program was approved by the MBLC. And the MBLC looks at the library and Phil, correct me, but the MBLC looks at the library as, as you know, a 20 year look, look ahead, not just five. So uh, if you, you recall, we made a lot of the spaces flexible. Um, so I, 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 I mean, it would be no different than Candace leaving in three years after it opens and a new librarian coming in. We wanna make sure that the design has the flexibility for the, the vision of the next generation of library users. But I, I think I think we should look at you know specifically the uh, circulation patents because they are different. I have no doubt. Candice? Yeah, um, one of the things I wanted to I put it under new business because it wasn't in the agenda. So um, I thought the building program, which is pretty much like what we submitted for the application and what got approved by the MBLC, I think that's something that this committee should go over carefully, um, and um, wondering if we should. I can send that out to everyone on email. Um, if you could look that over, so you know why the decisions were made, and then, and then what the what the expectations are for the because of the grant, um, and how much flexibility we have, and uh, and maybe Phil will cover some of that on what he's showing us tonight. But I thought for those of you who weren't around for the first part of the process, which would be um, Tim, Eva, Vern, Julie, and Denise, um, it'd be probably good for you if you haven't already. Um, just take a, take a look at that. So that's um, a great idea. Yeah. What did you call that? The building plan? Uh, building, building program. Program, program plan. Building, no plan. Again. building program. program. Building, building program. program. Got it. Thank you. I I I understand um, uh, what you're saying about flexibility, and, and I remember that was a big piece of it, of of what was going on um, at that time. Um, but I, I, I just, I just think that, that that we need to to take a look because I remember when we were going through the whole process, everyone used to say, "This is just the schematic. This is just the schematic. Everything can be changed. You don't have to worry about, you know, details." Um, and, that is true. We can change. We I definitely think. can change layout. We definitely can change the look of the building, the materials of the building. Uh, we can change a, a lot of things, but you cannot change. The programmatic part of it without the world coming to an end by the MBLC. But if you but if you decide that, for example, if you had a, a computer lab, I'm using this as an example because 20 years ago everybody wanted to put a computer lab in their building. Um, and some of them, when they put them in for a grant, um, and then they got a grant, they they built it just like that. And, and others, after three or four years or five years, similar situation year and um people weren't really building computer labs anymore. And so they said to the board of library commissioners, rather than build the lab, we want to keep the space in, but we're really just going to spread the computers out into the space. And if people need to take a class, we can do that with laptops in the meeting room or something like that. And you just, you need to explain that to the board of library commissioners so that they understand what you're, what you're doing. That's a little bit different. Um, this go around, um, a couple of folks asked if they could reduce their overall book collection size because, um, they weren't keeping as many materials and they were doing a lot more uh, with interlibrary loan and they wanted to add more computers and seats. Um, you can only do that by a modest amount, but that is something that folks that have come that has come up a couple of times with a couple of our clients. But whatever you decide that you want to tweak, it really needs to be tweaking. If you make a big, big difference, then the Board of Library Commission is really not going to like it. Um, that's my experience. Um, Unless it makes big, unless it makes complete sense, you know. Um, but whatever you do, I think it's it's a good exercise to go through and refamiliarize yourself with the program. And then, if you want to change anything, uh, we can talk about it. And then you'll need to get the okay from the board of library commissioners if it makes any significant impact. If we're going to add a table or chairs, or you know, you want to stick one more computer in X Y Z room, they're, they're not going to care. Um, but if it's going to be a significant change and you don't have a lot of books, so I don't imagine that you're going to want to reduce your book collection. But I mean, some of these that we did, which were just huge warehouses of books, and then they, they, and then they kind of changed their mind after getting a grant. Um, 
so uh, as long as you keep that all in mind as you're looking through it and uh, the, the designs that I'm going to show you shortly are, are based on your prior program. And, but as I mentioned back then, the furnishings that we have right now are placeholders. You know, you may decide that rather than a table for four, you'd like two tables for two. It won't make a big difference on the floor plan layout. Um, you know, uh, if you want a comfy chair that's, you know, a love seat versus two easy chairs, you know, fine. You know, that's all pretty easy to do. Um, you don't really need the MBLC to, to, right. to kind of ratify that decision. Right. But for example, there has to be a teen room, right? Because that's something that we put in. Yes. You couldn't okay. eliminate your teen room. Right. Right. Or the, um, or the, the community room. Right. Right. Like room. certain elements need to be there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And some of the kind of, some of the, some of the functions that you have, for, for example, your, your meeting room is, uh, is available after hours when the rest of the building can be secured. They're going to want to make sure that you maintain that capability in the new design. And so we've tried to, to do that um, in this scheme I'm going to show you. I mean, I'm, I'm talking the other scheme like it's a, it's a full on design. It's really back to basics. We're going back to bubble diagrams and I'll explain that in a little okay. bit. So Should we look at that now or do you want, you think it's better to look at that first or talk about the tree first? Oh, whatever you'd like it to. Well, I mean, I think you should just vote the tree and move, we could get past the tree. Well, should we just vote? I, there was a proposal that Candace sent that the arborist gave you, Candace. Um, you want to share it? Yeah. Is it in that email today or is it? Yeah, I I, I made it a Word doc so you could share it. Um, okay. Is it the same thing you had in the email? 670 no. bucks. Oh, I just sent the email like five minutes before the meeting. Okay. Let me find it. Then. I realized that I didn't have it in a document form. Because I put it in the agenda here. Oh, you did? Oh, I, yeah. Right. Oops. <laughs> That's <all> right. <laughs> so Who this is what first? it is. Um, David Hawkins, um, Pelham Urban Forester. I think I forget what it's called, but he is also working with uh, Berkshire Design on another project for um, Deerfield. He told me. So he's familiar with the this part of our our town. So basically for $675, he could give us an analysis. Yeah. I move that we invite David Hawkins to give us the analysis described for $675. Okay. Second. Okay, all in favor? Uh, 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 roll call. Well, I can see faces here. <laughs> no, law, okay. the law is uh, Yeah, it requires. Okay, roll call. <laughs> Ava? Hi, uh, yes. Okay, Candace. Aye. Uh, Candace, Bradbury, Carlin, aye. Denise Mason, aye. Judy Johnson, Johnson, aye. <laughs> Satu Zoller, aye. Satu, you gotta get a you gotta get a roll sheet. It goes a lot quicker. All right. Just read the name and tell them to pipe up. Well, I was trying to, Dan, but thank you. <laughs> All right. So everyone is in favor of I guess he'll do a report or do you want to invite him to the meeting, Candace? I think he's going to come out to the site. Okay. Yeah. Well, it, say, it, it says that he's going to do a report and what the okay. maintenance would be too. If, right. you know, the tree's worthy. One thing I yep. want him to tell us is um, if we are going back behind the new building, the old building, I mean, uh, the impact on the root structure of this thing, if you know, if you're going to impact 40% of the tree, um, the the town, uh, I, I understand it affects 40% of the, the canopy. And that's how it sort of roughly works. So um, I really want to know uh, what's the 20 year prognosis for these trees? Because if, if they're going to die within 20 years, trying to save them, maybe not the smartest thing we do. And it ain't going to be cheap to take it down when there's a building there. Right. And I think he I think he did say he was going to discuss um, construction issues and protection in his report. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Great. So we'll move forward with that. And I will stop sharing. All right, Phil, do you have the capability to share the screen, Phil? Um, if you let me, I'll try it. it I, like or Candace has to let you, I think. Yeah, I think um, it's set up for you to. Okay, great.
Can folks see that okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I don't know if, uh, for those of you that, that don't know, we, um, my office maintains a postcard collection. <laughs> <laughs> and it is uh, absolutely monstrous. We used to collect them all in physical form. We have thousands in physical form, and now we have even more electronically. Some of them are available on our website if anybody's interested, um, but it's really just a, a, awesome. just a little bit. Um, but um, I thought it was an interesting place to start. I took a look at this um, and then something caught my eye here on this photograph. Um, some of you may be aware of this right over in here in this area. Folks see my cursor? Mm -hmm. over yeah. yeah. And, uh, if you'll bear with me, I will. I was just I was looking at that too. Wonder, wonder what that was. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna to try to. Oh yeah, that's better. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, where'd my show go? Great. <laughs> okay. Oh, there. <laughs> there, go. there we are. Can so can folks see that over there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is it? Um, you can see it in these photographs as well. Huh. This one is a very uh, early image before uh, the, the trees grow. Yeah. Um, but you got a little uh, vestibule over there that looks like it might have been built up as part of the original building um, so that you could get access into that meeting space down below. Um, looks like an outhouse. It does. <laughs> It's uh yeah well I mean, there's lots of lots of bright light in there um so I <laughs> didn't remember seeing that prior to this and so uh, you can see it here again um and so I got to looking at some of these photographs see if anything else had really changed it doesn't really look like anything else had really changed but uh, this elevation you'll recall from the last scheme is where they broke through with a couple they turned these windows into doorways and this gets into the office and this is the one that comes out of the stairway. And yep. so the idea is to restore that portion of the building. Um, and then down below, the yes. idea is to restore, the building is very symmetrical. And so we'll restore it. So it looks like this end over here. Uh, the far end, which you can't see, we think probably will always look like that, probably still does. Um, but then the front side was always a door. Um, and so we'll probably leave it like that. And so I went back into the 1996 drawings where the addition was put on. Yeah. And they didn't really have a demolition plan. You can see this is the addition with the stair and the lift. But over here where I've kind of highlighted in yellow, you can see they called out for the demolition of this entry porch. <laughs> so I just thought, I wanted everybody to be aware of that. That's original. I don't know I, if that's original. I don't know. Look at that. There's no trees. There's no bushes. <laughs> this looks I would have made it out of brick. It looks pretty early. Anyway, the reason I'm pointing it out is because it is not our plan to restore this little vestibule. Oh, good. <laughs> Just wanted um, everybody to know that. Uh, we're going to put a window back in there, and I don't think we need a door. Um, it certainly leaves a door there, but I don't think you need it. But anyway, that I, I just thought. I, I, Interesting. I think that space in the in the basement there was originally the town hall, which is why it probably had its separate little entrance there. It was a function that was not part of the library. It was some town function that took place down there. Ah, is that right? I thought it was a meeting room. I think it was a meeting room. <laughs> and but it could have been for town meetings and yeah, lots lots you, of libraries. You've been, you've been short the meeting space for about fifty years, sixty <laughs> seven <70 years. laughs> So there's, there's your building now. Pretty much looks the same. Um, there's been some repointing you can see. We're, uh, we're planning on going in and kind of fixing that up a little bit, um, doing some patching just to kind of fix things. Otherwise, things are pretty much going to stay the way they look uh, from the street. Things haven't really changed very much uh, in this building, which is probably good. So this is, uh, this is your site plan um, taken right off of uh, Google Earth. Um, a couple of things I want to point out. Uh, it's cut right off of Google Earth. So north is straight straight up. And so the south side is down across here. Um, if you would ask me to, to look at where we were going to put solar panels on, on your existing building, that'd actually be facing the street. Um, and if you had a gable that ran 
in this direction or 90 degrees to this roof, you could, you could have it down on, on this side as well. And that would probably still work. Um, so the last time we had an, an addition, we had a, a gable that runs left to right back here. And so we could have supported um, solar on that without having to do it on the front building. And a lot of that would be blocked by the original building from the street. Um, and so there's certainly opportunities if we had turn a gable this way to do that as well. It's probably a little bit more efficient, faces a little bit further south. Um, and then any section of of lower sloping roof, we could certainly do panels like we did on, on Greenfield and they're not really visible from the street at all. They, they lay pretty flat on the roof. So I took another copy of this and stuck it on the site plan, um, one of the versions so you can kind of see the overlay. One of the things that, one of the reasons I'll point that out is because on the survey, they showed the canopy line of these large trees and these are the, the two large trees that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. This one is obviously the bigger one is closer to the property line. And then this is that maple that that uh, people didn't want to lose. Uh, and when you look on the survey, the drip line on that tree is on on almost all the trees, just completely monstrous. And it's uh, they're not really that big. So we laid them out. You can see the survey in the background in gray. And you can see the canopy lines that the survey I put on them are really, really large. And we put a green line on there that is a trace over of what you can actually see in Google. Hmm. So see those lines kind of tracing and it's the trees in the front too. Yeah. The canopies are just, the canopies are just a lot smaller than the surveyor has them noted. I think that they just grabbed something that they had and kind of plugged it on there and eyeballed it. Um, so it's not really, uh, not really representative. Okay. So we're looking at a tree canopy in green there based on what we see in the in the uh, aerial um, that's smaller. Um, and we're right looking at a building here that is pretty much right at the edge of the tree canopy. The reason the tree canopy is important is because the drip line, the edge of the canopy where it drips down onto the ground is where the feeder roots are for the most part um, on an older on an older tree. On an older tree, they're actually a little bit inside um, the drip line. And on a younger tree, they're a little outside the, the drip line. That's kind of a rule of thumb based on, and that's about as much as I know when it comes to um, uh, trees and drip lines, you'll get better information from the arborist when they, when they point that out. The reason I'm, um, the drip line is important to me, the canopy is important to me is that uh, we need to build a building without damaging the, the, the tree. Um, but what this also means is that in order to build the building, we're going to have traffic going across the roots in a, in a percentage of the tree in order to be able to build this. Um, we really can't make the front to back dimensions here much smaller and still have useful space back here. Um, if it gets much skinnier, the building stretches out uh, and really becomes inefficient. And we'll end up having to build more square footage than we really would need to in order to be able to fit everything in. Um, you know, building a long skinny building doesn't really work. Uh, it would mean it would stretch out on both sides. It would kind of eliminate the possibility for a little kind of a reading garden here as we're suggesting. Um, and if it comes out this way, it may impact the parking area. Um, so the parking area is a little different than the last time. The parking area used to kind of share the, the entrance where your existing parking lot comes in off of the street now. And uh, it was a little bit more compact. This one is a little bit longer and straighter, but it may also make it easier for a potential connection either as part of this project or at a later date to other town parking if that's something the town decides to do because um, you could just connect in from the rear of this. Um, but if anything, the, the parking plan laid out like this is a little bit more efficient, so that's probably a good thing. Um, so I'll get into the plan itself a little bit more, but basically rather than kind of extending back here to the canopy of this the larger tree and eliminating this tree, we're, we're squishing it down a lot more and it extends out left to right a little bit more. Okay. Handicap parking, again, new entrance off of the street, keeping the existing street trees in this big large tree that you have kind of in your side lawn. Um, pulling the pavement away and basically creating a little side lawn here on the front of the addition. Um, and then we have a section of the addition that kind of faces the street, um, which might be kind of nice. And the idea here is, is that you would have a gable 
that runs front to back uh, opposite the gable you have here. And there's an opportunity for solar here. And then there's opportunities for solar on this portion of the roof as well. There's an opportunity for a patio here. So we'd enter into the building here and you could walk straight through the lobby and out the back, kind of the way we did in the previous plan. Uh, and then we'd have emergency exits out of the meeting room, which is shown in this kind of pale purple indigo color, and then a potential for an exit out of children's to a little garden area or a kind of a patio or reading area outside on the side if you decided you wanted to do that. Okay. That's the, uh, that's just the edge of the church right there. You can see in this photograph. Yeah. Close to the property line right there. <clears throat> And then your neighbor over here is pretty far away. Their garage and their, their houses are pretty far away. And you've got quite a bit of trees and bushes along the side. So I yeah. don't think that we're going to be bothering your neighbor all that much. Okay. So this is what we're calling a floor diagram. It doesn't really have all the walls. And so some of the spaces between these different colored boxes would have walls around them, like the toilets. Um, and between the kitchen and the, and the uh, meeting room storage. Um, but others don't necessarily, uh, this space right here and this orange space necessarily, wouldn't necessarily have to have walls around them. Um, they're more spaces rather than individual rooms. But this gives you an idea. It's a quick way for us to kind of put together how the, a space like this might lay out. So you'd come into the center of the plan, stairs and elevator directly ahead. Um, so this is a lobby space. Uh, public toilets, uh, access to the meeting room would be through some doors into this large meeting room. And then you'd have meeting room storage, a kitchen, similar layout that you had before, elevator machine room next to the elevator. Uh, this red dotted line represents some kind of a vague idea about how you could lock it down in the evening, close off access to the elevator and the stairs and uh, secure the upstairs from there. Uh, children's department is probably closed with a glass wall and you could lock those doors down at night, um, or you could just separate the whole thing off here. The idea here is that this lobby is kind of shared between the um, uh, the, the children's, the main lobby and the, and the space um, adjacent to the existing building. So you could leave this open in the evening and that would give you access to small group activity, um, potentially friend space or the staff room, if you wanted to leave those spaces open at night. Um, so something like that would work. This is really just, a, I just took the existing furnishings. They're not really laid out. I just grabbed them from the other plan and kind of stuck them in here just to make sure they still fit. Um, the proportions of this space actually work a little bit better than the proportions in the, the other room we had, which is kind of a funny Z shape. Uh, so it has some potential. Children's work area and desk. So you can see what's going on in children's toilet. Okay. I assume there would be a door here that you can keep an eye on that would allow you directly access into this small activity room. If you had a program you wanted to take the kids in here, we could put a door there. Um, if you <clears throat> take them out and around, little things like that are probably are pretty easy to accommodate when we get to the next level. So if you take the stairs or the elevator here to the upper floor, you arrive right here at the center of the plan. Um, circulation desk and workspaces are here. Up a couple of stairs either uh, or in the elevator up a half a flight, basically to this raised section. The reason that we're raising that floor there is to give us some additional headroom in the meeting room below. Um, adult stacks and reading spaces here, uh, study spaces, additional reading spaces here, teen room and teen projects on the right, quiet study rooms, director's office, utilizing the old building pretty much the way we were before for reading spaces, periodicals, local history, and then AB materials, new books, the kind of grab and go collection is on low shelving that sits out in the middle and it makes it a little bit more convenient. Uh, toilets upstairs pretty much stack up over the toilets downstairs to keep the plumbing in the same spot. That's, that's a plan diagram or a bubble diagram. And what's in the front? Pardon? What's in the front? Right up in here? Uh, no, the, the two rooms in the, the oh, light. So room. periodicals, I'm sorry, it's hard to read. Periodicals, reading, and local history, and then mm -hmm. a reading room and conserva uh, a conversation area. These are basically the same as they were. I didn't change those at okay. all last plan. Okay. 
you know, we, you, you know, bring those beautiful rooms back, take the bookshelving out of them and really turn them into those, you know, dynamite open spaces. They really, you know, when there's some beautiful finishes in here that we're not really going to be able to replicate uh, in the back. We'll take some cues from it, but these are going to be the most beautiful rooms in the building. Okay. And Phil, so the circulation is up on the second floor. If you go to pick up books that you've ordered and some of you come up here to get them. That's right. That's the same as it was in the last, the last plan. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you can certainly circulate it, books from the it, children's it, department. Um, you could do a self checkout or, or children can check out books from here as well. Yeah, we'll probably have some uh, at least one, if not two self checkout stations. And I think that that makes sense to to look at doing that. Mm. And the stairs going into the left room upstairs, um, yep. is there a ramp there as well? It's the elevator. If you get in the elevator here and go up half a level and come out the back. Oh, okay. That's I what see. we were doing the last time around as well. A ramp yep. just takes up so much room. Okay. Uh, so the elevator, you can go uh, one side or the other? Yes, that's right. It's okay. a two-sided elevator. Yeah. Okay. Phil, did this new design change any of the dimensions of, of different spaces? All of the sizes of the rooms are the same. Okay. Um, and the overall size of the addition is the same. Okay. It's just been squeezed. Right. Kind of, you squeeze on a balloon and it kind of swells out on the other side. Right. That's, uh, <laughs> that's my whole job in a nutshell. <laughs> Put on your business card. How, how will it affect the outside appearance? So what we tried to do here is the proportions of, of that chunk right there are very similar to the proportions of the existing. And so we're, we're looking at a, the potential here of a gable that runs front to back. And so um, if you recall in the last design, we kind of picked up on the architecture, kind of the inspiration of the kind of end gable wall there um, and was kind of running across the back here. So I could imagine doing something similar to that in this direction. Mm -hmm. So you'd have some nice window spaces. It might even be nice to get some um some reading areas up the front so you could look out the windows and see people coming and going uh mm -hmm. as they park and drive in and out uh and that might be a nice place to sit and look out so yeah. phil um in the um the space directly behind the existing building is is that roof going to be sloped as well yeah where uh, your cursor is I, I, I don't know the answer to that yet. It certainly could be, or this could be low, it could be low sloping. So this could be a cross gable. It could be gable that way and gable this way. That's the same dimension as well. So we could certainly do that. Or we could keep this all low sloping and put mechanical and equipment and in, in photovoltaics up there. Yeah, uh, that I was asking about specifically for how solar would be a, a, a ad, appended. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I could imagine solar, if this was a gable, that runs this way. Um, I wonder if this annotation tool will work. So I guess sort of. I don't know if you can see that, but if that's uh -huh. a gable that runs down the middle, oh, yeah, yeah, then um, then I can imagine solar there. Um, and then if there was a gable that runs in this direction, then I can imagine solar there. Uh, the only problem with that is that the water is going to want to roll off on your head uh, when you come <laughs> into the front door, right? And so keeping this low sloping would mean we could put solar on all of it um, mm. and that you wouldn't have water coming on your head. So it, we really need to look at the look at it in three dimensions if, if people kind of, now that I've scribbled all of this, if people kind of like the way it, uh, it's, it's headed, we'll look at it a little bit further. Or if you want me to come up with some other ideas, I'll I'll try to come up with some other ideas. The, you, you know, we're kind of we're kind of squeezed by the property lines, um, mm -hmm. uh, the the amount of parking we could fit in there, and and now those 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 trees at the rear, and you know your existing building, um, is not a not a whole lot of options. If we're keeping that tree in the back, it's going to be something like this, in various forms across the back of the building kind of longer and thinner um, one way or the other. Bill, where are the computers? We've got uh, computers here. 
uh, there's computers on the desks. Um, there's computers uh, in this room. Uh, again, I pulled the furnishings directly off of um, what we had last time and, and plugged them in here. But uh -huh. we'll have, you know, there'll be floor outlets here uh, with a bunch of data and power drops. And if you decided that you needed to put four computers here at a later date or later in the, in the design, uh, we'll be able to accommodate that. We'll, we'll have computer drops in the floor here so that people can plug in laptops when they're sitting in the easy chairs. Uh, that's just pretty normal. We'll, um, we'll have them in a variety of places so that you'll, you'll be able to put a computer wherever you need it. Again, like as Dan mentioned, designing for the future. You know, there'll be data and power drops in the quiet study rooms. They'll be in the team room and in the project room. Another benefit to this project room is that uh, you could see into it. Uh, it was a little hidden in the last plan. And I don't mm. think that the MBLC was wild about that. But from here, with some glazing behind the copier here, you'd be able to look into the teen room from the desk. And I also, because we have a teen librarian, um, so to have a place for her to have a desk, um, you know, an office space, maybe that could be something that could be, you know, um, mobile and within the teen area. Yeah, we lots of times will we'll do a mobile station for somebody like that and they're yeah. using a laptop and they're moving around and yeah, sure. And they'll end up. Go ahead. Candace, I was just wondering, your your building is going to have excellent Wi-Fi in every inch of the space, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. So a lot of people are going to bring their laptops, they're going to bring their iPads or or pad, tablets, and they're going to be using their own computers, the ones that are fortunate enough to have them. Um, so yeah. good. Yeah, and lots of libraries are doing laptop vending machines now as well for folks that don't have yeah. them. Yeah, right. You'd be surprised how many people come and use the uh, libraries. It's a, yeah, lot higher, it's a lot higher than you think. No, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I was wondering if it could be something in the future that instead of a full-blown computer that you had tablets that are available for people to, to take and use and you have a big alarm sound. So when they try to walk out the door <laughs> with them, you know. Well, yeah, they, 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 do have a, they do have a vending machine, two, three, three vending machines in uh, Greenfield. Where they swipe their card and they take the they take the yeah, uh, tablet or the uh, or the uh, laptop out and when they return it, it, it right it that's, that's cool yeah yeah and you'll find that when you're closed there'll be people sitting in the parking lot mm -hmm. you know oh, they, they do that now so <laughs> 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 they've been doing that for for yeah. a long time great what do you think. Yeah, actually, the question I have now, which I, I put in my uh, new business notes, was um, at what point do we get the staff input? Um, do they come to one of these meetings? Do I have a separate meeting with them? And, and then Phil would attend to get to get the feedback um, or, or questions, ideas. Um, so I, I, might I, would, I, I would not have the staff come to the meetings. OK. Uh, Phil will go to the staff. OK. <laughs> and Phil will design what is appropriate and what is not appropriate, and the end decision is going to be up to you guys. Okay. Yeah, we, they may we, want things that we can't afford. They may want things that aren't realistic. They might catch things that we forgot. And I think you know, Phil. This is my, I don't know, Phil. What's this? Our third library together, fourth library together. Yeah. And I can tell you that I haven't had an unsatisfied customer yet. So. They're, they're, they'll be thrilled with the interaction as we go forward, especially when we get to the nitty gritty and they blow up. Each room is a page and it's the little details that are going to make the librarian's life easier. The draw placements in the desks, believe it or not, huge, huge as to you know how that particular library functions as to what size draw and what size form and all that kind of stuff that, you know, would seem like a nothing burger, but it's not. And, and when, at what point should I have um, Phil come to um, to meet with the staff? I, I will typically want to meet with your staff at a couple of different points when we get a little further along. Um, okay. I will rely on you to kind of trans translate 
uh, okay. share with them. So for, this is a PDF file that I made, and okay. um, I've already posted it on the, the web uh, on, a, on Google Drive, and I can send uh, you the address. I can send it to uh, and you can all have it. Um, I would typically make the slides available for folks so that you'll have a record of it, and I would share it with them and uh, go through it with them. And if, if there's any of their concerns, I, I'd love to hear about it. But I think do it's you, probably best have, for to filter through you. Do you okay. have the original plan handy? Uh, yeah, give me a minute. So I think Julie, since a lot of, since a lot of you guys weren't here for when we did the original plan, it might be helpful for you to see it. Sure. And understand yeah. what that tree is doing to us. <laughs> so this lower floor plan, can folks see that okay? Let's see if I can. Can you zoom in a little bit? Yeah. So this is the original building. Again, um, the plans on the original building, I didn't really change at all. The, the, the entrance came in the side. Uh, the night lobby was here with uh, toilets, meeting room uh, with a kitchenette and meeting room storage. Uh, and there's your nighttime closure and then you'd lock off the elevator. Um, you come into the lobby here and there's the stair up to the second floor, doors into the children's department and kind of a rear door that would take you out to uh, outdoor space here. You come into the children's department and there's a parenting area here with a little kitchenette. Uh, children's toilet, uh, and then the children's work area is in this corner of the room. So again, I just pulled these furnishings and stuck them in the, in the new plans. Um, so there's some, uh, I think there's a site plan in this set and I'll show that to you. And then here's the upper floor. So you come up the elevator or the stairs and again, the circulation space is kind of sits right here in the center of the plan. And there's that short flight of stairs. And again, you get in the elevator and out the other side to get up the up a little bit. And then we have the reading area in the center here. Uh, the adult collections are both here on these taller stacks. And then there's a lot more in lower stacks here. So you can see over them. Um, we were able to consolidate more of them in the, in the newer plan. Um, entrance into the teens room. Uh, the toilets are here. So this is the problem with the teens project room. It's hard to see from anywhere except from inside the teens room. Mm. Um, quiet study here and then a very small quiet study there and then again periodicals uh -huh. reading and local history and a reading and con conversation area this hasn't changed in the in the newer plan well, one of the things that was important back when we did that that plan was the uh you know trying to make sure that the original tilton building remained figural that your eye wouldn't be drawn to the addition, it would be drawn to the original plan, the original building. And that's why it steps back the way it steps back. Right. So there was, there was a methodology as to what we were trying to achieve. But there's, there's that tree. So you can see oh, that, right. that tree needs to come down in order for this plan to work. Right. It's just not possible to build it. And, and would the there be less, is, um, oh, sorry. Parking lot is just a little bit more, it's a little bit less efficient. There's a little bit more of a driveway here in order to get right. a drop off in and so forth. The, the new plan, because we're coming out a little further, allows us to come in here and drop folks off close to the door and without having to do the extra drive around. Right. And is there less room for solar on this plan? Um, Not room, but less um, effective solar. Um, no, it's about, I, I mean, the, the, the addition is the same size, so the amount of roof space available is about the same, yeah. Okay. And then folks, I'm sure have seen the, so there's kind of a slice through the, the, the kind of cake of the building, so you can see what we're doing. There's your original stairs coming up to the upper floor. There's your original building. There's your gable. Um, there's the gable at the rear. And so we could do solar here. Um, and we could do some more solar on this lower section here. And there's the stairs where it go up. You can see, you get a pretty low floor to ceiling height here in the, in the, in the basement. Um, so in order to get some kind of reasonable headroom down here, nine foot 11 or 10 feet, um, we need to bump this up. The floor structure is a lot larger than it was in your original building. Just can't get it that low. 
and then we had some uh, some renderings that I think you've probably all seen, right? So we kind of picked up on that form from the original building here for that gable. And so I think we'd probably do something similar and you'd be looking at something that kind of faces the street that kind of looks like that on the mm -hmm. side here. Okay. That makes sense. So that, that kind of side facing element right there, that portion of it would be over here a little bit further and looking at the road. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've got Julie and Ava with their hands up. Yeah. Oh gosh, now I gotta remember my questions. Huh? <laughs> um, I have two questions. One was the cost of an elevator with a single entry versus an elevator with a front back. Um, is it is it much more to have that double entry or whatever, double um, door? An elevator is about $150,000 out of the box. And then to that, you can add maybe 120. Um, and then to that, you can add about $40,000 per stop. And so, um, so say it's 150 plus 80 is, is 230 grand or so versus 270 grand or so for an extra stop. But the amount of square footage you would need to build in order to do a ramp um, would probably be more than that. And is there more maintenance costs or anything? So the Annual? additional stop? Uh, no. Yeah. No. Okay. Um, the other question was this, the new drawing goes right up to the drip edge of that closer tree yep. so when you're building the building is that is it possible to build a building right up to that drip edge without damaging the roots of the tree that's what your arborist will tell you um okay. there will be some wear and tear over the the roots there and so they may recommend some protection they may say you know the contractor ought to put down some xyz on the ground to help protect it so it doesn't get chewed up it probably just crushed stone to keep it from just turning into muck um, would probably do it and then they'd scrape it out and restore the lawn afterwards. They're going to assume that if you're going to drive over the, the, the feeder routes that you will have some loss. But they, my guess is that they'll probably recommend doing a little pruning on the tree before you start anyway. And so by reducing the canopy a little bit, um, you can, um, as Tim said earlier, with a little bit less uh, root, um, active root, uh, growth canopy size uh you can you if you reduce the size of the canopy that won't have as much to support and so there won't be as much shock for the tree to kind of go through and i think the idea of doing that sooner rather than later so that the tree has time to recover from the pruning prior to the construction starting is probably a good idea but i assume that the arborist will tell you that one more question when you were doing this new layout compared to the old layout is it like roughly the same price or is yes. there anything in the new yeah. layout There's, that would cause it to be more or less expensive? Well, if well, one of the things we talked about is whether or not we'd have a kind of a front to back gable on one side, and then it was kind of low sloping on the rest versus a cross gable. A cross gable probably costs a little bit more money than the lower slope roof, um, just because it's a little more complicated to build with the valleys and everything. And if we could eliminate that, probably the cost goes down a little bit. And then we won't have to get into something to keep prevent water from coming down on your head at the entrance. It's just it's a little simpler. So it's not a huge cost difference, but it's, but it's, uh, yeah, there's, there's a little bit of money there. Basically, uh, at this point, it's kind of a square foot cost if we're building about the same amount of square footage. If we can simplify the building a little bit in terms of its shape and so forth, it'd probably save you a little bit of money. And I try to do that here. So I'm, I'm, I'm and like, when you compare it to the old plane where we lose the tree, um, is it still the same deal? It's about the same, you think? I, I, Yes, um, but one of the things that I'm I'm trying to do in this in this redesign is to take advantage of the fact that we're redesigning it a little bit to help simplify the layout of the plans and the and the form of it so that we can reduce cost. I've I've eliminated a couple of corners on the building. Corners are expensive. The same amount of square footage. If they could do a square box, it's going to be cheaper than a than a cruciform shape, for example. It's just a lot less corners. It's... Yeah. Thanks. Eva, you had a question too? Um, yeah, I, and some of this is being panned out, but I'm, I'm just really trying to get a sense of the 
benefits of the new design compared to the previous design other than that tree. Mm -hmm. and, and if that tree were not a factor, you know, is it is the original design better in terms of um, the view from the street, um, you know, the layout, you talked about the gables, the cost seems to be a little bit higher with the new design. I, I'm trying to really, absent the tree, is, is the original design, would that be preferred, I guess is what I'm trying to get to. Uh, do you want my opinion on that? <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think that this building costs more than the original design. If you were to put the, the two designs side by side, I think this one is probably a moderately less. That's what I'm trying to do is simplify it a little bit so it gets a little bit more cost effective. Um, and even though five years ago, we did a great, great job. Um, I, I'm even better now. <laughs> I, I, right i just got five years more experience than everybody in my firm does and and i and so i when i open it up again you know fresh eyes and we the design process process kind of things morph as they go along with a lot of the input and everything and when you kind of step back and you look at it again uh and you kind of come at it with fresh eyes um i could see some of the things that we needed to try to solve the the book collection was a little bit fractured um the, it was hard to see into that teen space the quiet study space is one of them was a little small um so i try to solve some of those problems in this new design and so i think there's some benefits to it um and children's department is a little bit simpler in terms of its shape and the way it lays out um i think what people see when they come in the building nighttime access i think is a little simpler than what we had before it, um and there were some concerns about you know you can't really see who's coming and going um, I think the, the new plan, I think, solves some of those issues. So I, 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 I will tell you that when we looked at this before, again, we were really cognizant of the streetscape and the view from the street. And uh, I, regardless of what Phil draws with his bubble diagram, as he calls it, it's really going to be how it looks and it is received by the public. Function aside, this is a big step for Deerfield's downtown, and I think we need to nail it. And I think we did before, uh, and I think he, like Phil said, I think he will again. But the cost of it, you know, till I, till we know what the exact materials and the window ratios, and all that, I'm reserving judgment as to which one is more expensive and more least expensive. But I agree with Phil wholeheartedly. It's antiphysimal at this point and at this stage. Right. right. Denise had a question and then Tim. Sure. You know, just getting getting back to the tree. You know, I know that people have, you know, great attachment to it, not only sentimental, but it also, you know, has aesthetic value. So I'm just sort of curious that if the tree is cut down, how much more water, you know, will that affect the groundwater? The, the water table is also very, you know, really high in Deerfield, and I'm just curious whether that would make a big difference in you know, storm water. And, and I'm sure you can't, you probably can't answer that question right now. I don't know if an arborist could. Yeah, I, the, arborist, Kenny. the arborist may have an opinion on that. I, I don't think that, that that tree and the amount of water that it draws out of the soil is going to have nearly as big an impact on your water table as the brook that runs behind the site. Right. Okay, thank you. Um, so Phil, I was just curious, um, do you have somebody in your firm that does like the solar studies that usually are done when a company comes in and puts in solar? Do you hire somebody from outside? That so is our- some, some shady areas might still be having enough solar that it makes a difference and you can, you know, so I'm just, how do you go about deciding what's effective solar and what isn't? <laughs> So we have uh, our electrical engineers um, manage that, and they've done a number of our systems for us. And they basically will ask for a model of the building, and then they will run those calculations for us and tell us what what, what they think is going to work the best for this mm -hmm. type of a building. So, Phil, I remember when um, back in the fall, sometime when when I think we were having might have been a finance committee meeting, um, and someone asked about the um, 
the cost of the energy, you know, because of going all electric and that, and then we talked about, you know, offsetting a lot of that with, with as much solar as possible, but the initial install of solar would be expensive. And so we talked about possibly looking for grants. Um, do you think that there's a lot of grants out there that we could um, possibly the, get? The, the, the best grant program that's been around has been through um, the state and they sometimes have money and they sometimes don't. Um, they will have grant rounds that they announce every now and then. Um, and of course, there's a bunch of different projects that are all vying for those grants. And it's really gonna depend on kind of <clears throat> when we're at that point, when we have the design and whether there's um, money available mm -hmm. and whether or not we could apply. There are other grants that are available that you know are in the thousands of dollars. It doesn't make a big, big impact, but. Yeah, yeah, Massachusetts, what they call the Technology Collaborative, used to have, they used to be able, you know, they would used to pay like half. Um, I don't know if that there's that much grant money around anymore. Okay. Judy? Judy? Yeah. yeah, sorry, I don't know how to do the hand thing. <laughs> it's okay. I saw your um, hand. <laughs> Phil, is it possible for you to pull back up the... Uh, Draw the, the the drawings of the outside of the the building the the, the new version. The outside of the of the the new one the new one the new design. Yeah, the, 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 today? yeah. yes. I, I haven't uh, haven't done any we, of that. Well, you had some before. You had. Um, I that was images of the. I can show you those. Those are the images of the old design from five years ago. Oh, I, I thought I thought so you had one with, with the with the new. With a space going horizontal instead of vertical. Remember, there was like an overlay you had of the new design. You're looking for this exterior yeah. image. So this is this is from five years ago. Right. Um, Correct. And, right. And and so it would be closer. Um, it wouldn't go back as far, and it would extend more over here to the left. But I haven't done any modeling of this new design yet. Okay. And does that drawing show the one the, the 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 large tree that would be saved? It doesn't look like those trees are represented behind this building. Yeah, that's gone. they're not they're not in this model. That's right. Yeah. So both of them are gone. <laughs> they they just weren't modeled. Yeah, that's what I, I just wanted yeah. to say. It, it, yeah. It's just it, yeah, it wouldn't case people sky wondering, right. it's not a representation. Yeah. Hmm. So, 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 Phil, with the, with the new building, it would be the same brick as the original building, right? Uh, that's what we've been assuming. Yes, uh, that's yeah, what we're showing and, in this. And, and so, you'd, you'd, you'd have that little architectural detail on the roof, the little whatever you call it, the little yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd imagine that. I mean, those those are chimneys. Um, I'd imagine. Oh, we'd probably okay. Like that. Okay. Again, it goes back to what the new design is going to look like too. It, it it's going to make a difference. It, I mean, it's a totally different yeah. different scenario here. Yeah, you, know, you can see that. we were directly behind the building. Now we're kind of to the left, shifting towards the uh, library. I mean, towards the um, church. The church. Yeah. yeah. And we weren't ever matching that end elevation. We were just doing something that was kind of inspired by it. Um, and so we'll take another look at that right, again right. as well. Now that it's facing the street, it, it's going to have a different impact than it does when it faces the side. And so we may want to look at that again. Um, right. if, if, you know, what that might look like if it's facing the road over here somewhere. Yeah, the thing I like about the original design is it, it feels like the new space is, is well integrated old space, um, you know, aesthetically. And I, I'd imagine we would do something similar this time mm -hmm. around. Bill, could you show um, the parking diagram for the old design and the parking? Because I think that's one of the areas where it, it's really improved is the amount of um, tarmac in the old design was much greater than in the new one, if I'm remembering correctly. Get these to sit side by side. Yeah, I, I, I also think that you know we've got to look at 
uh, with regard to the, all of the paved areas, it as a whole with the campus. Because yep. we don't have to be isolated anymore. We were isolated before. We don't have to be isolated anymore. Is that, does that help? <laughs> hey, that was pretty good, Phil. Yeah. I got to give it to you. That's good. <laughs> oh, that's good. There you go. Yeah, because yeah, so I think that in the building program, we're supposed to have 27 dedicated library spots. Yeah, and I've got 28 on this one. Okay. <laughs> Less paving, oh, more parking. Uh, I'm telling you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah. from the top view, the new one looks less imposing. I, I really kind of like the new layout you've got. Hmm. Yeah. And I do think the improvement in the teen area, I don't yeah. know, I'm not a librarian, really nice. but I could imagine that teens could probably find ways to create havoc. <laughs> <laughs> like if too. they have isolated spaces. With yeah. no eyes on them, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's not, that's, that's, that's uh, challenging. That's <laughs> not a good thing. I also like with the new site, uh, I mean, um, design, is that I was just thinking about the backyard with or without the trees. Um, people, like the students that come across the library from the school and they go through the back and they, they use that back area to kind of like play and run around. And then also programming. We have a fair amount of outdoor programming in, this, in the warmer months. And it's really nice to have that big backyard Mm -hmm. um, so I, I like that part of it too. And that it's so accessible, you just walk right through up to it. That's kind of neat. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, yeah that's, I like that too. Was here. Yeah. yeah. Where would the patio have been on the old design? Um, we didn't really have a patio that was separate okay. from the outdoor reading area. Where you just mm -hmm. kind of walk through, and the mm -hmm. kind of anybody who wanted to share that space was was kind of back here with the children. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's an opportunity here to maybe do something on this side and something else on the other side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, one of them could be a patio and the other one could be more of a green space. It, I mean, it depends on how much money you want to spend, how much money we have left in the budget. Now, what about glass? Because I know in the, um, in the old design, there is that glass connector between the old and the new. Are you still thinking of that for the new design? Um, I didn't really get the warm and fuzzy, like everybody loved that. And so I, I, I was not thinking of that. Um, this, this kind of long bar here is really the same width as this guy. And I was kind of thinking them as maybe two masonry forms. Um, and then just doing the glass at the entrance and uh, going out the back here. Yeah. Um, so maybe not as much and then, you know, more solid around here, but. Right, right. Um, I, uh, it's it's very early. I'm you know yeah. speculating. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of what I had in mind when I was laying the thing out, but haven't really gone beyond that yet. Yeah. But if you would like, I will continue to pursue this and lay it out. If folks think that it's worth looking at, or if you'd like me to hold off until you hear back from your arbors, I can do that as well. I was just yeah, trying to move things forward a little bit. So that, right, it's actually kind of interesting, Phil. I sense that people like this design with or without the tree issue. Yeah. Um, so that's something to think about too. You know, even if we don't build around the trees, do we prefer a design like this one? Right. How and I think work, as far as it, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Can, um, how much work, Phil, would it be just to to try and? Um, provide like a direct on view of this with incorporating the in the end of the, the new portion showing the, the the design feature that you're sort of mimicking from the side of the old building I don't uh, know if I'm being clear no you, you are that uh, you're, you're looking at <coughs> what we'll be producing like two two and a half months from now okay so that that would be something that we we wouldn't you're gonna, you get, you yeah. You're gonna get options, Tim, of of yep. elevations as well as, you know, we we normally develop the plan first to make sure the program works because the whole purpose of the building is sure, the and then we marry the facade to the to the to the elements. Uh, so I, I, 
Good. I, I know you're going to be happy in the end. I just, you know, it's just going to be a back and forth. And, and, yep. and of course, you are, you, you are looking for as much solar as possible, too. So that gives a different right. look to the building. Yep. No, I, I, I was just, uh, I know I was probably putting the, trying to ask him to do something he's going to do later. Um, but I, I do, I'm, I understand the logic behind the way the old building was concept came up, but I also um, think that it could look very visually appealing. This, this plan looks like it would be a great addition to the town as well. Um, it just, you know, allows you to see more of the new building. <laughs> there you I, go. I, I, I agree too, that but I, I do I do think that it's there's a public outreach portion to this that I think is going to be hugely important because you know they voted on you know a building that looks a little bit different than what they're getting. And I think you know, I think it needs to be explained why mm -hmm. and, and that they're still getting exactly what they voted for. So I mean I, I I just think it's important that we yep. publicly present this properly. Oh yeah. So would we want to do that sooner than later if we're going to change the the, the design that much? You, you're not. You're nowhere near ready. We don't present okay. until we're ready. Otherwise, you have failure. Okay. <laughs> okay. We want it. We want it to be rocking and rolling before we do that. Yeah, the viewscape is going to be like like Dan said, very very important have a good rendering of the viewscape that's what people will yeah but yeah. but the way you pitch it is you know i think regardless of what the arborist says it's an attempt to save the trees that people express concern over and and so that's one but then adding the additional benefits of the new design no we didn't redesign the whole thing you know some people will criticize just because of one tree you know the benefits are xyz and just really laying out the other benefits of the redesign. Hmm. Yeah, and I think that um, the the blending of the historic and the new, um, you know, I think Phil is pretty aware that that's something that's important in in, in this town. Um, that you know, if if the building is isn't the new part isn't seen as much, or is seen more rather, that um, as long as the blending is good, I don't know if people will really balk at it i think maybe they'll appreciate it yeah because when you drive when you drive down the street now i mean there's really not a lot in that area that you know there there are a couple there's the old church and there's the bookstore that's been that's been worked on for so long and i mean that and if if people can see i was thinking of this when i was driving by the other day if you could see more of the new building and it looks good from the street I think mm. it could be an added benefit. Yeah. Mm. I agree. So what are our, our next steps now, Phil and Dan? Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Did you just do that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I don't want to leave you wondering. It's kind wow. of what I'm thinking about. I love that. So everyone, change your view to speaker view, if you haven't. Can you show that again? <laughs> oh, you have, to, you have to speak, Phil. Oh, is it my turn? Yeah. 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 So that's just a quickie sketch. Yeah. Uh, entrance sitting right in the center. Um, and then some kind of a form over here that is similar to what's happened at the original building, which is over there. And then two big trees kind of looming over the whole thing in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> nice. That was so nice. Two big, so healthy nice. trees. <laughs> It's so funny because that was I saw you, Phil, and I thought you had frozen because you were you were looking down and you weren't moving, but you were busy, you were busy. busy sketching. <laughs> I was listening. Impressive. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so the, ne the, the next step? steps you're asking about the next steps. Yes. Um, at the last meeting, you guys asked about uh, temporary space. Oh yeah. And I th I really think you got it. You gotta, you gotta give me a little on this because when, when I talked to Lauren, it, it wasn't, it, it, it was more about having the ability to get books than it was uh, about having, a, a, you know, a physical library open. I mean, you have to have the open hours and you have to have the ability for people to come and 
put in their order and then have CW Mars deliver the books in a day or two or whatever, however, however that works. Um, then having X number of square feet, next number of feet of, of book uh, books on shelves. So I, I kind of going to need you, the trustees to come back to me and say, what is it you want so that we can write the RFP for the amount of space that you want? Uh, I wouldn't put the RFP out until about six months prior to the uh, bid date because um, you'll get fresh numbers and fresh uh interest in, you know, we're not going to sit and hold something for a year while we're designing away. So we'll take care of that RFQ uh, when, when the time comes, the RFP when the time comes, but we're just not, we're just not ready to do that. Uh, I'm going to develop a budget for the next meeting. It is going to be a budget that we live by <laughs> and it's going to be a budget that you will uh, uh, see probably every every quarter during design, but at every meeting when, once we go to construction. I want you to know where the money is, where the money's going. Uh, since you are, you've been entrusted by the taxpayers with a real lot of money. So I wanna make sure that everyone's aware of it. Like today we spent $675, where does it come from? So, uh, you know, we I wanna set up the I want to set up the master budget to do that. So that's going to be on my to-do list when, when I get back. I'm on vacation next week, so it's not going to happen for a couple of weeks. Uh, that's, that's, that's all I have for the near future. Phil, you can tell what the next design steps are. Um, if, if folks would like me to kind of continue in the same vein, um, I, I will push that design along a little bit and see if I can get it laid out in a little bit more detail. Um, and uh, it's probably a little early to start on modeling. If I were to do any modeling, it would really just be massing modeling. And massing is really just kind of white boxes that give you the overall scale and shape. Mm -hmm. If folks are interested in seeing these, sometimes they're a little scary looking because they're so plain, but it really just looks like it's cut out of carbon. Mm -hmm. they, hated the, they hated the massing and in Greenfield, and they love the design. Massing is just really hard to understand because there's no, it, it doesn't have any. But once there was color to it, they're like, wow, that's what you meant. It looks great. <laughs> well, it's abstract, right? It, it, yeah. yeah, it's very yeah. abstract. It's hard to kind of understand what you're looking at if you don't look at them all the time. They're helpful to us in making sure that the thing is kind of coming together. But uh, based on our experience, when you show them to folks, it just looks horrible. We did the massing of your house, you wouldn't have bought your house. So I'll put it to you that way. You'd go, oh, that's yeah, awesome. It's just. <laughs> Do you need a vote from us to pursue that? Or can we all just nod at you and you can. Uh, we don't need any votes. I, okay. Yeah. I, 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 Lots of nodding. I'm happy with me kind of taking the temperature of the committee and kind of running with it. And I've listened to everything that you said. <laughs> I may shift okay. some things around a little bit based on some of your questions and. Um, as I move forward and, you know, once we start putting walls on, things start getting a little bit more real and I'll have to move some things around a little bit in order to make things fit, so. Right. All right, so I got a quick Andy. question. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Um, do, do you think that you'll have um, the report from the Arborist meeting? Um, I think he, I'm going to try to get him in next week. Uh -huh. and I don't know how long it will take him to generate the report, but. Okay. Yeah. Because it seems like that will probably be fodder for discussion. Yes. Yeah. So if we if we're going to meet in two weeks, hopefully he'll have it by then. But I have no idea how long, how long that takes. Yeah. 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 But we'll definitely send the building program out to everyone before yeah. the next meeting. Um, so we can look at that and the minutes from the last meeting. Um, and I think we're on schedule to meet in two weeks, which is March 7th. And I will, not, I, will not be, I will be in Japan. Japan? Wow. Wow. My wife Lucky. is running a marathon. Oh, wonderful. Wow. Okay. So, wow. Julie, do you run? No. <laughs> I've got a, a, a runner thing on, so it looks like you're running. No, no, Satu does. <laughs> or did until you broke your ankle. Till I broke my or, ankle. Or I'm trying to run again. <laughs> did you did you do marathons? I have done marathons, yeah. Yeah. 
She's doing the Abbott Mages. This is her last one. So she's all excited. She I won't do them ever again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tim, did you have another question or comment? Um, I just wondered, Candace, if you um, you do get the arborists to come, can you notify us when they're going to be there? Um, oh, yeah. In case anyone wants to uh, talk I think it might be it. helpful to it's a great idea. Yeah. ask all the questions sure. while he's there that a lot of them might be silly, but at least he'll know where we're at in our heads. Right. right. And Excellent. he's also going to look at the um, copper beech tree in front because the forester said that because that's close enough to the building that that could be that tree could be affected and that's in the front and it's huge. Um, so he's going to look at, at the two maples and the copper beech. Yep. Yeah, it's Julie, gonna, that's going to be impacted by the demolition. Yeah. Not today, but can we get an update on the fundraising project? Um, like next time or the time after or something. And then also, are, are we applying for CPA funds? I think we would do that next year because I, I think I emailed you, Dan, about the, because the upcoming. Um, well, I, I, to me, it's an internal transaction because the taxpayers have voted the entire amount for the project. So oh. if, if the town wants to offset what you've appropriated, the town certainly has that ability to do that, but it would be an internal vote. It wouldn't affect this project. We have the amount of money necessary to bring this project to completion as of today, regardless of fundraising, regardless of CPA. All those monies were kind of talked about, bantied about, what ifs, and you know it, that's a policy question. I I, I throw I'm throw back at Tim and Julie, so <laughs> you guys can deal with that one. Yeah, I think it's far more important for the fundraising committee to reach its goals than to worry about CPA at this point. Right. Although CPA could give us up to a million, according to Phil's. Well, in theory, it could, but uh, if yeah. you take CPA a million from one project, then you're de depriving it from another project. So, I mean. The real important thing is to meet your fundraising goal because that's money we have to pay for if if we if we don't get it. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're committed to eight million dollars, whether you raise a dollar or not. And, right. And people are going to be far more upset about you not reaching your fundraising goal than they will be about whether we shifted CPA money from here to there. I, that's my opinion anyway. And 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 Tim, you are correct. There are two other buildings on this campus that could use that money tomorrow. Great. So All right. Any, anything else? Meeting, it, excuse me. The next meeting is March 7th. Are we meeting every two weeks? So then the 21st or is that for, for the first? I think we decided to do that for the first couple months. Okay. So we get, the, till we get the design till we get the design nailed down. Yeah. After that, you guys can take a little breather. And Satu, are you when do you leave for Finland? I leave uh, after the next meeting. I'll send dates. Oh, okay for Tim, yeah. Finland and Germany and other parts. <laughs> well, the world, yeah. worldly group here. <laughs> I didn't like Germany. I'm half German, so. I, 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 just, I found places. it cold. I like to miss the fan of the food, but I'll be, I'm gonna miss the next meeting also. Julie in yeah. town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Judy, I have to sign off at six o'clock. Okay. okay, thank you, Judy. Bye, Judy. Okay. <laughs> anything Bye, else? Judy. I don't think we have anything else. Can we get a motion to adjourn? I make that motion. Second. We get a roll call it. Okay, Ava. Aye. 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 Julie. Aye. Denise, you said aye. Satya says aye. Tim said aye. Lily. Candice, aye. <laughs> All right. All right. We are <laughs> Who adjourning. Seconded it? Who seconded it? Um, did someone second? I think I just didn't write down who said it. Was it you, Tim? I, I, I uh, made Tim the moved. Oh. Candace so seconded it. I'm designating Candace Denise as the second. Okay. I seconded it. Yeah. That's <laughs> good. Oh, Denise did. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you all. See you in a couple of weeks. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.